All right, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have something that's probably not for everybody who normally watches this channel. You guys probably see all the aircraft reviews, the occasional tank review, but anyone who knows me knows I love Star Wars. Um, and occasionally going forward, we will have the odd sci-fi look in the box and build here and there. This one is actually something that probably not a lot of people have seen before, just because it's not really from the realm of normal plastic model kits, even though it is a plastic model kit. I know that sounds weird, but hear me through. So this is a kit from Star Wars Legion, which is a tabletop game, I believe. It, as you can see, it's a unit expansion. It's got some, if we flip the box over, it's an actual kit that you have to build, but it comes with some gaming related items as you'll see in the box. So it comes with one plastic miniature, 12 unit cards, 12 upgrade cards, 13 assorted tokens, and one roll sheet. Obviously the only thing that is really useful to us is that one plastic miniature. So here's a little bit of information about the actual craft itself. See, so it's actually a very cool looking model a little bit of TIE Fighter, a little bit of, I don't know what in there, Twin Tails. Got all those kind of TIE Fighter-like wings. They're so cute, they're so tiny. It's got a cockpit, two different types of pilots, Imperial TIE Pilots and Phase Two Club Pilots. It's also got uh, somewhat of an interior, even though it's probably gonna be kind of hard to see. It is open on both sides. It's like a sort of troop drop ship. The LE, in the LAAT slash LE name is actually, I think it stands for law enforcement. So yeah, it was used by Republic police forces during the Clone Wars. And for anyone who's, well, the reason why it's here now is obviously if anybody's watched the latest couple of episodes of Ahsoka, you will have seen a couple of these on screen very briefly once as they leave the hangar of Thrawn's uh, ship, the Chimera as they go out, kind of following Balin Skull and Shin Hati on, uh, as they chase after uh, Sabine Wren. And you'll see them again, I think, in the most recent episode as they land and troops deploy and surround our characters. So yeah, that's kind of why it's here. I was watching the show and also on Amazon and Google and well, yeah. So I'm gonna get everything out of this box and then we will look at it. That's my opening blurb, sorry about that. And upon opening the box, this is what you get. So it's actually a very large box for which I actually get in it. Some of the stuff is kind of rattling around. I thought there were loose parts, but no, it's just not that many parts in a pretty big box. So obviously you get the instructions for the model kit, which we'll look at in a moment. You get one bag clear parts. It's the canopy and the stand. And then you get the actual dropship itself, plus this display base, kind of gaming base sort of thing. We'll look at that in a minute. And you get this little bag of tokens and such that you have to punch out of the sheet. You get some cards, you get this sort of intro to what this unit can do in the Star Wars Legion game. This for all intents and purposes for us is not very useful, so yeah. Oh, crap. Um, okay, so we'll look at these. Uh, I'm going to get these out of the bag so you don't have to hear crinkling plastic, and then uh, I will look at we'll look at the instructions, and then we'll look at the actual thing itself. So, be right back. So, this is the instruction sheet. It's on this little sort of single-page fold-out thing. Not ideal. Would have been nice to have a booklet, but this is kind of a weird-looking craft, and I don't think anyone else is going to come out with a kit of it, so we will let it slide for now. Well, actually, I take that back. Now that it's in Ahsoka, everybody's probably going to do a kit of it but who knows when that's going to happen. Looking at you, Ravel, or AMT, you know, a studio scale one of these to match your new uh, giant 30-second scale, studio scale TIE Fighter. Be kind of cool. Just saying. So as we open it up, the front is a parts map, Star Wars Legion, LAAT slash LE Patrol Transport Unit Expansion. We're just going to call it the Patrol Transport from now, so I don't have to say that whole thing. But here we have... A couple of options for pilots so as i said you have a clone pilot and also an imperial sort of stormtrooper-esque pilot i'm guessing we're going to go with this since we're going with thrawn night trooper zombie stormtrooper type look 
but we'll see. And then the parts layout is here. They don't have any sprues on them in this layout, so it's actually kind of cool to see what the parts all look like. You have obviously the sort of little mini TIE fighter type wings. I think those are some of the actuators for the bigger wings, landing gear, there's probably some interior pieces, the fuselage, and then the sort of twin tails, the side of the fuselage, doors, all that stuff, detail parts, clear parts right here. Actually, no, it's framing for the clear parts that are to be added later. So as you open this, you do open it like this. You obviously build sort of the interior, um, I guess, inner hull. So that's the tr troop cargo compartment. That is assembled as a unit. Then you can assemble the cockpit. The cockpit is very narrow. It's like a sort of double stack cockpit when the pilot or the gunner is lower and the co-pilot slash whatever gunner is in the back. It's a cool cockpit layout. Don't know how much you're gonna be able to see through a very narrow windscreen, but we'll see that later. And then you start adding the outside of the fuselage, so the fuselage plates, sort of the outer hull, I guess, sandwiching those uh, inner sub-assemblies, the cockpit and the cargo bay together. Then you get options for whether or not you want to pose the door and the ramp open. That would be kind of cool to see. Then we start assembling the sort of upper fuselage with the twin tails. Here's a couple of those sort of mini TIE fighter type um, I guess radiation wing sort of things that go on. These halves, I've seen a couple of builds online that say the fit on this kit is not, shall we say, Tamiya quality. But we shall see how it goes together. I can't imagine it being absolutely horrific. Famous last words. Then you can see adding the pilots, again, choosing between a clone or imperial pilot, and then adding them into the cockpit there. Adding the glass, this is a clear part. That is actual molded sort of framing. This is adding, I believe, the, yeah, the outer little wing things on here. I don't know if they're posable or not. So, and then adding it to the stand in the back. Then if we look at the back of this, there's components showing kind of what the, uh, yeah, what you get in the, the, the kit. Um, you get some credits, Fancy Flight Games, Lucas Films and some rules on how to play with this unit, which are completely useless to us. So yeah, that's the instructions right there. Get that out of the way. Look at the clear parts first, because there's only two of them. Actually, no, there's, actually, there's one, two, three, four of them. So this is the canopy. It has come off its sprue a little bit, hopefully not causing major damage. I think we're gonna be okay. But this is the sort of inner glass. There is a framing piece that goes over the front here. These are the two, I guess, maybe engine grills or little like searchlights that go on it somewhere. I don't know where, but this piece is very nicely molded. It's actually, it's quite thick, but as you can see, you can see my hand pretty clearly through there. So don't skimp on painting the cockpit or do a crappy job. You're going to be able to see some of it. At least you'll be able to see the front pilot. I think the back one might be in like a dark hole. So you, you know, I don't know if you're going to be able to see them unless you add lights to it, but that's another level of complexity. So, yeah, you can see you, there's a little distortion around the edges, but I think that front edge right here is going to be covered by the framing, so probably going to be okay. But at least through the front glass, you can see pretty well here. So, yeah, there's that. This is the in-flight sort of peg thing. There's two giant ejector pin marks right in the middle there, so not ideal. I think I might probably end up going with filling the receptacle for this and then drilling a separate hole for like a carbon fiber rod onto a simple black base as a display. So it's less of a gaming miniature and more of like a scale model. This is the actual base for the kit. Um, I think this fits onto here somehow. It kind of clips in, but yeah, I've seen people add sort of terrain to this and it looks kind of cool, but I think I'm gonna be putting it on a regular model base. Um, sprayed into the sprues, we're going to go, I guess, from the bigger stuff, so that it's a little easier to see what stuff is. So, these are the outer fuselage halves. So, we have, obviously, molded detail, raised detail, recessed panel lines. There is definitely some surface grain to this plastic. I don't know how much it's going to matter once you get it all together, get it painted, weathered. I'm guessing these things, it's like a troop dropship, so you could probably apply some armor techniques to it, add some mud to the bottom where it's landed or troops have gotten in and out and splashed on it. But 
yeah, you can see there, all the details that are molded are sharp. There's no distortion or flash or any issues out here, but you can see some of that traditional Star Wars sort of paneling down at the bottom. I'm not a huge fan of how they molded stuff like, like this. This is what looks like a, a grill. Well, that definitely is a grill of some kind. And if you apply two halves of this together, that's going to be a pain in the everyone knows where, to fill. Also, this panel is split in halves on the bottom here, so we're, we're gonna hope and pray that the fit is good, otherwise there's gonna be some interesting filling and sanding to do. But the inside, nothing to really talk about. Some giant pegs in here to locate everything, so no excuses for bad alignment there. And then these two, obviously, left and right halves click together. Pretty big opening, actually, for the troop compartment, so I would say maybe good option to leave it open unless you were doing some sort of an in-flight thing with this in a dog fight against something else i don't know exactly what it would be in a dog fight with but options 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 there put that to the side and then we have this is the yeah these are the inner components to the cargo slash troop bay so this is the roof obviously i think these are probably representative of some kind of interior sort of dome light so if you did want to potentially light this Check your references and see what they are. This is the sidewall detail. Again, nothing incredibly amazing, like wiring and cable and whatever harnesses everywhere, but I think this will paint up well. Give it a nice black base coat, appreciate it, dirty it up with some dry brushing and washes and potentially some, I guess, mud on the ground where people have been walking. But yeah, everything is molded very cleanly. There is a little bit of a, a little bit of a mold line going down these round parts, but that's kind of the same with every kit. If you want a single piece sort of landing leg or a flight, a flight wing actuator, it's kind of what you're gonna get. So this is the ramp, I believe. Yeah, that goes down the side. That is very nicely molded there. No ejector pin marks on that. Everything else, very clean, no flash. Everything is very sharp. So that's that sprue. Are there sprue numbers on these? There are no sprue numbers on these. Okay. This is some exterior detail pieces. So this, I believe, might be the floor of the troop, compar troop, troop compartment. And then this is some more of the walls. Actually, these are the doors, actually. So these hinges do only, I guess... Yeah, they're kind of a butt joint, so you're going to have to pick open or closed or halfway open, halfway closed, and stick with that. Not ideal. Would have been nice to see a hinge. You could probably drill in and pin it if you wanted to be able to play with it, but otherwise, just put it in a position and kind of leave it. These are the sort of mini TIE fighter wings. Look at them. They're so cute and very nicely molded. I don't know if that interior, like the solar panel detail, is a little oversized for this sort of application, or if it's a different type of thing than a TIE fighter wing, I have no idea. But what is here is very sharply molded. All the panel detail is a little heavy, granted, but it's Star Wars, it's a sci-fi thing. Build it, paint it, weather it. I think it'll, I think it turns out good. I've seen a couple of these built online. Honestly, they look really cool. So again, giant pegs and all of this stuff. So no excuses for bad alignment there, unless the pegs are off, in which case you're screwed. This is the upper part of the fuselage. So you can see the twin tails. Obviously you'll be putting uh, sort of halves down the bottom here. Hopefully the fit on these halves is good. Otherwise it is reasonably, it's gonna be reasonably easy to sand this. The panel lines are huge, so I wouldn't imagine you'd be able to fill them easily. This is a cannon. It's actually got a, uh, it's a solid molded tip, but you should be able to drill that out fairly easily. This is that framing. For the front of the canopy nicely molded no flash whatsoever anywhere on this interior of the cockpit walls is actually quite detailed again it's all a little heavy-handed like the panels are pretty heavy the riveting is like massive but i think this is where that'd be a cool painting exercise paint it up use some different shades of grays and blacks and greens and pick out some of these giant switches in reds and whatevers and then you're only really going to be able to see what's going on through this front glass it's not like it's a giant open canopy so i think you'll be okay if anything you probably will see very little 
So again, these giant pegs go into the pegs in the fuselage. Should not be any issue for alignment there. This is the, oh, this is the top half of those twin tails. You can see the tails here. It's kind of a, it's nice that these, these pieces on the back, like the actual sort of horizontal vertical tails are molded on. So no need to worry about getting the angle right. These are sides of the fuselage. Again, all the panel detail is quite heavy, but it is a sci-fi thing. It's Star Wars. It's also, it's also 148. Some people say 148 scale. I think it's supposedly closer to 147th scale. So, I mean, close enough. But, so it's not exactly like this is a 1144th scale thing that's got these giant trench panels. I think in 48 scale, after you've sanded it and primed it and put a couple layers of paint on it and weathered it, I think it'll be just fine. There is a molded radiator grill of some kind, very clean, very sharp. Some little miscellaneous details. I don't know if something fell off here. We're gonna have to check. Um, and then, oh yeah, something probably fell off there. We're gonna have to check where that went. Oh, it's right here. Um, but yeah, so a little piece came off, but these are the sides of the fuselage, some add-on details. Again, very, very deep and thick panel lines, but everything very sharply molded. I think it'll look fine after paint, to be completely honest. Then here is some miscellaneous little detail parts, mostly the pilots. Again, you get choice of clones or Imperial pilots. We are obviously going to go with the Imperial kind of Stormtrooper type pilot. And we're gonna have to see how different these guys are from the Night Troopers. This is some piece of the cargo troop bay. Again, molded very, very cleanly, very sharp detail, no distortion anywhere, no flash whatsoever. These figures are all very sharply molded as well. See some of the faces there, that are the helmets, I should say. This is, their arms are molded with the control sticks, so easy to set the angle there. They, that's their butts, but here, have a close look. Let's see other arms. There are other arms that are free. Nice detail molded on. I think after a paint job, I mean, let, let, let's be honest, these guys are going to be painted all white. You give them a wash, I think it'll be okay. But yeah, so there's no decals in here. I don't know exactly if there's actually any markings on this, but... Yeah, I think if you uh, are able to source them from other kits, I think you'll be okay. But yeah, this is the Star Wars Legion LAAT slash LE Patrol Transport. I think I've heard people call it a patrol gunship. It's got two, two or three little cannons on it. Um, but other than that, yeah, like it's a cool little ship. It was I, probably unknown to most people, including myself, until the last couple of episodes of Ahsoka. So We'll be building this. Check out the Instagram for build photos and in-progress shots. If you have any questions about this kit, if you're thinking about buying it and you want to know something specific, let me know. Leave a comment on the video below. But otherwise, thanks again for watching, and we will catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye.